Hi, welcome back to Cracking the Cryptic, where I think I've just received an email in time to uh, get this New York Times hard puzzle solved. So um, this is going to be from Wednesday, and we've had a couple of um, emails saying this is very hard today, and can we show you how to do it? So I've just managed to load it up, so I'm hoping that it will still be um, today's puzzle, and I'll try and show you how to solve it. now. As usual with the New York Times, we should just take a quick grid stare at the start to spot hidden triples because they are a big favourite of, uh, of the algorithm that's used to create these puzzles. It keeps coming up with these hidden triples. Um, and sometimes I can spot them right off the bat, but today maybe not. Okay, so I can't see anything terribly clever so let's start with these fours this has got to be a four here uh, there's got to be some ones in this bottom box in one of those two positions as usual I'll be pencil marking in blocks if a number can only go in exactly two places fours there because of these two fours fours over here because of these two fours twos here these twos and this two. It's only one seven in the grid. These things, I don't know whether you guys notice them as well. It's sort of the odd um, arrangement of numbers. Six, i.e. either a, a dearth or a plethora of certain numbers certainly seems to stick out to me. Six is here reason to one of those two squares because of these two threes. Ah, twos into those two squares. That's more useful. There we go. We get a two here because this two here rules a two out from this square. Pencil mark twos at the top now. Eights. This eight and this eight interact on this block in a nice way. That locks an eight into one of those two squares. Now this is important because now we have uh, the twos and the eights pencil marked in the same two squares. Now this square also has a three pencil mark in it. That's no longer it's no longer possible that this is a three. If we think about the logic that these pencil mark represent, if I was to put a three here, the implication would be that both a two and an eight would have to go in this square, which is clearly not possible. So this can no longer be a 3, therefore this must be a 3. And we oh, now this is nice, we have two 3's now here, so there's a 3, 4 pair in these two squares. Place pencil marks and 8's at the top. This 7 suddenly becomes important, look at that. This 7 now forces a 7 into this square. And these two squares now I've got to be 5 and 9, and there's a 9 here, so all of a sudden we start to make progress. This must be a 9 because of the 9 here. This must be a 9 because of the 9 here. This must be a 9, and we're going to finish the 9s here, which is good. There we go, 9's done. Um, and now the only thing we really have to be careful about is not... Uh, using these numbers as as much as we could because we've certainly made good progress. So if we look at um, row 4 of the grid, what do we need here? We need 1, 6 and 8 and there's a 1 and a 6 in column 6. So this square, this square is an 8, this is a 1, 6, this is a 1, 6. Now can we use this 8? Yes, this 8 and this 8 interact to force an 8 into one of those two squares, which means this can no longer be an 8. And 1s. 1 here and a 1 here. So they interact on this block in exactly the same way and force a 1 and an 8 there. Okay, now I'm going to show you something. The next number I'm going to write in is in this square. 
have a think if you can work out how I can write in a number into this square and this is this is actually quite a nice trick so what I'm looking at is I started by looking at this 7 now this 7 operates on this 3 by 3 block to lock a 7 into one of two positions now ordinarily this wouldn't be enough but the thing we can notice here is that the sevens are locked into row one oops, and row three. Now look at this seven. This seven doesn't restrict the sevens greatly in this three by three block, but it does mean that this square cannot contain a seven. So again, the sevens in this block are locked into row one or row three. Now, we still need to put a seven somewhere in row two of the grid, so it must go in one of these two positions. Now let's have a look at this 3 by 3 block. And again, I don't know where the 7s go, except that I know they match with column 4 and column 5. The 7s here are in column 4 and column 5. The 7s here are in column 4 and column 5. So where am I putting my 7? In column 6. There is only one square, and it's that one. That's might be nice, in fact it is nice, because now this 7 and this 7 interact on this block and force 7s into one of those two squares. Now this 7 and this 7 interact to force a 7 into this square, which means this isn't a 7, this is a 7. So this 7, which was the only 7 in the grid at the start, believe it or not, has proved to be the breaking point of this puzzle which is very surprising and quite lovely so now we need a 2 and a 3 to complete column 3 so this is going to have to be the 2 and this will have to be the 3 oh no 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 sorry 3 here so this is a 3 3 3 so now this is a 3, and therefore this is a 2 to unwind the earlier pencil marks. This is a 3 because of the 3 here and here. This is a 3 and this is a 4. The change of font means we've completed the 3s now. This 4 and this 4 operate on this block to give us a 4-7 pair at the bottom there. And what do we need into these two squares? 1 and 5, so let's put that in at least pencil mark it, because that's going to give us a 5 at the top there. This 5 and this 5 mean this is a 5. Um, and I'm hoping that we're not far away from a solution now. We need 2 and 6 to complete this block, and there's a 2 here. So that must unwind in this way. This is a 6, 7. Therefore, this square needs to be a 2. That unwinds the 2 and the 8. There's an 8 in one of those two squares. There's to be a 1 in one of these two squares, and the other square is going to have to be a 6. So let's put that in. Uh, 1, 5, 4, 7. That's all looking good. This is all looking good. So where would I look next? I mean, I suspect there's lots of things I'm missing here because we had such a flurry of numbers going into the grid. Um, five and six into these two squares isn't resolvable. One, five, six to complete this block. So there's a load of pencil marking we can do over, oh, over here. Let's pencil mark ones into those two squares. Fives into these two squares and sixes into those two squares. Now this square here cannot be a six look because of this six over there. So where can we place uh, a six in column nine? It's only going to be in this square and that might be the breakthrough we need because now that forces a six here. This can only be a one that unwinds the one and the eight which forces an eight here look gives us an 8 there as well and completes the 8s. We need a 5 into one of these two squares. Now to complete the central 3 by 3, and therefore this can't be a 5 anymore. Must unwind as 5 and 1 like that. 
this square here now must be a 5. That unwinds this 5 and 1. That forces a 1 here. 7, 6, 4 to complete those squares. That's going to unwind the 7 and the 4. Uh, what do we need here? 4 and 5. So if everything works out well, that's going to be that way around. Oops. 7 and 6 here. And 1 and 6. So there we go. That is how to do the New York Times puzzle. I did it fairly quickly. I hope that's all right. It's pretty late here in the UK. Um, but I did want to demonstrate that even with without going to, into anything terribly exotic, just with good technique, um, good appreciation of when numbers were being locked into specific rows and columns, yeah, we can bash the New York Times hard Sudoku on the head. If you enjoy the content, please subscribe. We really appreciate it. Um, some of you may consider or be in a position to sponsor us on Patreon. That's massively appreciated. You get your own uh, puzzle every month set by us. And uh, for $3 a month, you get a video on that puzzle too. So if any of you are in a position to do that, that would be great. And we'll see you again next time on Cracking the Cryptic.